Well, I want to welcome everybody uh, on this webinar on, um, well, mixed tumors. I think for a long time it was underestimated that there is such a differential um, expression and, and a variety of primary liver cancers, not only primary. in the first topic. I myself, I'm a liver pathologist, uh, specialized during uh, the last 20, 30 years in uh, the role of progenitor or stem cells in regeneration and carcinogenesis. So um, I will tell you the histopathological classification. So I will now share my screen and start the presentation. Victoria, is it like this, okay? Um, yeah, I have to go back because- Yes, I, it's okay. Yeah, so uh, I will tell you about the pathology of liver cancer. Um, yeah, as probably most of you know, um, the setting in which liver cancer arises is usually a very long-term disease. we can recognize them on imaging and on a gross pathology level and then we call them dysplastic nodules instead of foci when they're smaller. These nodules can be like in all uh, cancerogenetic uh, circumstances low grade and then become high grade uh, dysplastic nodules and finally uh, they, these lesions evolve into a true cancer and very importantly especially for the um, for the radiological diagnosis is that the normal venous um, vascularization of the liver changes in these lesions into an
we still have maybe a couple of portal tracts, but newly formed arteries. You see the arterialization of the lesion becomes more and more clear. So from a hypovascular or isovascular lesion, we progress into hypervascular lesions on radiology. And that's a sequence that we can see in the microscope, but also um, in imaging. So in the early stages, we have a more compact growth pattern, uh, so increased cell density, also some architectural changes, uh, the pseudoglandular pattern, fatty change, and of course, the newly formed unpaired arteries, as we call them, uh, reflecting the arterial um, vascularization of, these, uh, of liver cancer. Um, something that is very important in all tumors is from the moment that a lesion becomes uh, malignant, it's invasive. And in most of the epithelial cancers, it's invasion through the basement membrane, which is the definition. Of course, in the liver, it's difficult because along the sinusoids, there are no basement membranes. So we cannot use that definition. And therefore, one of the only sites where we can really recognize invasion is in the portal tract mesenchyme. So this is a very important lesion to look for as pathologists and to recognize. So luckily, it's not only uh, on morphology that we have to judge. We also have some immune histochemical markers that came out from um, molecular uh, diagnostic features on lesions that we all agreed on that were low-grade, high-grade, or early cancer. And this, uh, these markers are glipican-3, heat shock protein-70, and glutamine synthetase, which are very useful um, as diagnostic markers to differentiate dysplastic nodules from early carcinoma. So, okay, now that we know these criteria, it's very important to um, make a significant classification once you have an established cancer. And just distinguishing hepatocellular versus cholangiocellular is too simple because we have a whole spectrum of cancers. So as you see, the classical, um, the classical way of Class of, of classifying the tumors are either hepatocellular and drift away uh, to go to another organ to um, uh, make a metastasis of this uh, cancer. 
So um, in chronic diseases, and this is important as a background, in chronic diseases, usually after many years of regeneration, the hepatocytes become senescent. So they, due to telomere shortening after every uh, round of replication, they have uh, a senescent nature of the mature hepatocytes, which is not the case uh, for cellate cells or lymphocytes or uh, biliary cells in general. So it's especially the hepatocytes that become senescent. And this is a typical um, inducer of a so-called progenitor cell activation in human liver disease. And um, progenitor cells are those cells that are really at the uh, edge of the hepatocellular compartment and the cholangiocellular compartment. So they're here at, at uh, uh, the limits of these two um, epithelial compartments. And they are typically activated at their maximum in these chronic stages, the cirrhotic stages of the disease. So this makes these cells also a possible target cell for carcinogenesis. Because what do you need to become a cancer? You need to live long enough as a cell and you have you need a high self-renewal capacity just to accumulate the necessary mutations and alterations to become a cancer cell. And in fact, there are three types of cells, of epithelial cells that are capable for that, mature cholangiocytes, hepatocytes, but also these progenitor cells at the edge between biliary cell compartment and the hepatocellular compartment. So all these cells are possible target cells We can have mature hepatocytes uh, that are the origin of a tumor in cer certain circumstances, and they will give rise pro probably to really mature uh, hepatocellular, quite well differentiated hepatocellular carcinomas. The same is possible with mature cholangiocytes giving rise to cholangiocarcinomas, pure cholangiocarcinomas. But if there are progenitor cells that are capable of differentiating into the two directions, on their way to differentiation, they can also undergo mutations, et cetera. Here a canaliculus. So there's an immature cell forming a canaliculus together with the hepatocytes. So 
um, we found progenitor cell features within these further quite mature tumors. Uh, and it could be a, a picture like here, but it could be also a little bit more diffuse like there. So there are markers expressed uh, progenitor cell Eighteen, uh, again, a consensus meeting with a whole bunch of pathologists, but also clinicians and radiologists, and um, found a consensus terminology for the primary liver carcinomas. Um, and here you have the scheme of that paper. So we have the classical pure HECs, the classical pure cholangiocarcinomas, and then cholangiocarcinomas with some hepatocytic features, immunohistochemically or Hyptocellular carcinomas with co some cholangiocytic features like keratin 19, and then the, the real mixed tumors, but these are already recognizable on HNE. So when you have a classical HNE staining and you recognize as well hepatocytic.
because your club, you know, oh, amateur oncologists, they just start right away and give them chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. So that's why we started with this with the seminar. So the some, you know, it, it is important to tell people that. But I you absolutely need immunity chemistry to prove yeah, which cells you see and then you would easily you would never um, uh, make the, the the wrong diagnosis of a hip to cell carcinoma because you do at least a spectrum a certain type of stainings to confirm the nature of the cells um, so the the context is important but also the immunity chemical phenotype of the cells okay okay you do automatically or the uh, the clinician has to ask for that no Please no look uh, look, uh, look uh, carefully and uh, no. maybe that is a f- primary tumor no you don't need no no that. well at least in an academic setting i think everybody does a set of statings to confirm the nature of the cells i'm not sure okay. in every peripheral hospital but you shouldn't do this type of 